America is engaged in a coronavirus war. Unfortunately, too many of my fellow Republicans are afraid to fully deploy the most powerful weapon we have to rescue our economy and keep our middle class afloat. I'm Lee Speakerman, and that weapon is America's financial muscle. Now, you may have heard when the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates to near zero, oh my God, now there's nothing left to fight a recession. There are no more tools that they have to counter an economic contraction. That is patently ridiculous. After the financial crisis, in addition to the $750 billion stimulus that Congress passed and President Obama signed into law, the Federal Reserve added $3 trillion to its balance sheet and infused it into the banking system to shore up the economy. $3 trillion. Now, when the Federal Reserve adds money to its balance sheet, what does that mean? It means that they create the money out of thin air. That's right. With a few strokes of the keyboard, the Federal Reserve created $3 trillion and pushed it into the banking system after the financial crisis. Now, Republican and conservative orthodoxy would have said, well, that will cause inflation. Guess what? Just the opposite has occurred. For the past few years, the U.S. has been in disinflation. That is, inflation below the annual rate that economists and the Federal Reserve believes is ideal for economic growth, which is 2%. So we've been in disinflation. And we need to stop operating as Republicans, based on economic mythology, and look at reality. The truth is that since World War II, we've had twice as many years of high unemployment as we've had of high inflation. And the United States has never experienced hyperinflation. So let's deal with this crisis. Let's not be timid, because it may well take $3 trillion to counter this economic contraction to overcome this economic storm that the middle class is being caught up in uh, because of the coronavirus. And I think the Congress should immediately pass a package of legislation that I call the Pandemic Emergency Response and Mobilization Act, or PERMA, which would raise the debt ceiling the amount necessary, again, up to $3 trillion to deal with the emergency spending that will be required. Number two, to allow the Federal Reserve to buy government securities, debt securities, directly from the government as opposed to on the secondary market so that they can use that balance sheet money, that created money, to buy securities that perhaps only yield a quarter of 1%. Uh, they could be PERMA bonds, maybe 50-year bonds specifically finan to finance the expenditures for this emergency. Number three, specific legislation to quickly ameliorate the disaster being visited upon our middle class. Uh, number one, we've got to uh, replace the pay that workers are going to lose. If we have to replace the earnings of just 20% of America's middle class households, there are roughly 75 million middle class households in this country, if we have to replace the earnings of just 20% of those for three months, that alone would cost us about $300 billion. If we have to replace the earnings of the roughly 15 million restaurant workers in this country for three months, that would cost $100 billion. Uh, so, we're talking about serious money here. And some Republicans would say, oh, that's a bailout. We can't bail out companies so they can pay their employees. Oh, wait a minute. Stop and think. If these employees that are being adversely impacted by the coronavirus lose their jobs and aren't paid through their jobs, what are they going to do? They're going to have to apply for SNAP, for food stamps. They're going to have to get on welfare. In other words, become directly dependent on the federal government. Is that conservative? It's crucial that we use the federal government's prodigious borrowing power to shore up the businesses that pay these employees so that they can stay on the job and stay employed because work is the most important thing. As I've often said on TV, a job is not just a production input. A job is life. We have to keep people employed, especially the middle class who are being asymmetrically impacted by this horrific coronavirus economy that we're going into. Now, when I say $3 trillion, again, it may take $300 billion to finance the sick pay, holiday pay, whatever for these uh, businesses, medium and small-sized businesses, to keep employees uh, paid 
uh, during the time that they're not be able to operate or that they're operating uh, under subpar conditions. Yes, big businesses, the money should go to them as well uh, in the form of, uh, of uh, tax credits because they're paying income taxes or should be paying income taxes. And we can't worry about the size of the business. The key is keeping people employed keeping our economy going and keeping the middle class people employed. We have gig economy workers who are not working for an employer. They're working for themselves and they're independent contractors. We have to have the IRS in a position to send them checks or money transfers to make up for their lost earnings as well or to pay the entities, whether it's Uber or other gig economy companies, uh, to pay them uh, through the company. But these folks have got to maintain their income and maintain the employment relationship or the work relationship that they have as gig economy workers. We may need tens of billions of dollars uh, for our military uh, to reinforce our health care infrastructure and our health care workers. Uh, also to pay for retrofitting buildings to serve as temporary hospitals to treat people with coronavirus. That's going to take tens of billions of dollars. Undoubtedly, municipalities are going to be under enormous stress because of lowered revenue and higher expenditures. So we it may take a trillion dollars to shore up the municipal bond market uh, and also to uh, rescue financial institutions that will be stressed because of this economic crisis. Um, we will need to rapidly repatriate, Americanize the supply chain in our country. We've heard a lot about that lately. I've been talking about it for years. We need to re-Americanize American manufacturing, bring our supply chain away from China and other countries and onshore. We should have a $150 to a $200 billion program of very low interest loans or tax credits to induce companies to quickly make the investments, build the plants, hire the workers to onshore our supply chain. Um, and that's very important. And of course, it may take 150 to 200 billion dollars to bail out airlines and hospitality companies that have borne the brunt of this coronavirus because obviously we've we've locked down and uh, air travel and travel and hospitality industries, the cruise ship industry are more abundant because of this crisis. We need to keep them going. That's going to take a federal backstop. And why the federal government? Because the world is begging to loan the U.S. federal government money. Again, the 10-year Treasury bill is now yielding less than 1%. That means investors around the world want to buy American Treasury debt, even though when you factor in inflation, it's getting a negative return. So in effect, those investors are paying us for the privilege of loaning us money. That's an environment we've got to take advantage of. No business is in that situation. No person, can, individual, can borrow money on that basis. But the federal government can. We're all in this together. And the federal government's enormous borrowing power has got to be harnessed to shore up this economy. And finally, we need to make long-term investments we should have made a long time ago. Republicans and Democrats should have worked together on this a long time ago to do what President Trump has talked about since during the campaign, which is rebuilding America's crumbling infrastructure. We need at least a $1 trillion infrastructure bank, and we need to be prepared to borrow that money to quickly put in place a $1 trillion infrastructure bank supplement that with private capital, include toll roads, and get investors to invest to build toll roads. That's better than raising the gasoline tax uh, so that we can have the most competitive and productive infrastructure in the world. And that will not be an immediate salve for this economic crisis. There aren't that many shovel-ready projects, but it will be an intermediate and long-term backstop for our economy and for our job market. And of course, long-term, it will create the infrastructure that will make our economy more productive and more competitive. So we've got to have that $1 trillion infrastructure bank. So this could very well be a $3 trillion package, this PERMA package that I'm talking about. And one other step that I think is important is amending or 
passing laws that supersede the Federal Reserve Act so that the Federal Reserve can directly buy debt securities from the government as opposed to buying them on the secondary market. In other words, basically use that balance sheet money, that created money, to buy government debt right away at a very low interest rate, even lower than investors would be willing to, to settle for, so maybe a quarter of a percent interest. And you hear from Republicans and conservatives, if we add debt, our children and our grandchildren will have to pay it. Look, I'm a conservative. I'm for very judicious federal spending, very careful oversight, strong accountability. But that is complete hooey. That is BS. Our children and grandchildren are not going to pay for any increased debt. You know who's going to pay for it? Future borrowers, because the Treasury will issue new securities to pay off the old securities as they come due, and the Federal Reserve, when necessary, can create the money to buy securities in the absence of investors. I know that sounds dangerous. It sounds counterintuitive, but guess what? The federal government does not borrow money the same way individuals and businesses do because it owns the money. When you have a dollar, you have a share of stock in the United States. And that is very valuable. The world loves the American dollar. And in fact, that's why the American dollar is vastly overvalued, which is why our exports to other countries are overpriced to them and imports into our country are too cheap. That's bad for our farmers, bad for our manufacturers and middle class manufacturing workers. So this program will take advantage of the tremendous opportunity the United States has to borrow very inexpensively, use that money intelligently to rescue our middle class and to build our infrastructure and fortify our economy long term. Uh, that's all very important. That is not money wasted. That is not throwing money away. And in fact, it will take the middle class off of welfare, keep them from going on to welfare and becoming dependent on government because they'll be able to maintain their jobs and be paid through their employers because of this emergency funding that will come from the federal government. The IRS can simply reverse what happens quarterly when industries and companies pay taxes to the government. The IRS can simply reverse that and give them a check to pay their workers for, let's say, three months, which may well be required. Let's get serious as Republicans, because the way I look at it, the only vaccine that's almost as important as a coronavirus vaccine is a vaccine for Republican austerity. We need to cure that because, again, it's based on economic mythology. Let's get the PERMA legislative package passed and signed.